Um, okay, so we've been in the series that I have called Apocalypse Now, um, because everybody's kind of freaking out and, you know, hey, 2020, you know, a lot of stuff about the end times and a lot of stuff about should we be afraid and all this stuff. And uh, it's, it's kind of become, you know, kind of like a cuss word. Oh, 2020. <laughs> you know, 2020 you. <laughs> Get the 2020 out of here. And uh, <laughs> and uh, so let's let's look at this. Um, let's let, let's look at this stuff. Um, we've been talking about uh, the mark of the beast. We've been talking about um, what the day of the Lord is last, or I guess it was two weeks ago. Tonight uh, or <laughs> this morning. Sorry, I'm not fully awake yet. This morning, I want to talk about a few things that are uh, very important. Uh, to remember. See, a lot of people have this idea about the end times. It's going to be something like this, okay? There's going to be a whole bunch of life as you as normal and then the end times. And that's that's not how it is at all. In fact, Jesus even described it as birth pains before. So there's a lot of back and forth stuff that happens. Um, you, have, uh, you have things that happen as far as... Um, political and spiritual things are happening and I mean this is before the Antichrist before the seven years before all this stuff and you think wait wait it's seven years what are we talking about don't don't worry about it um that's not really what we're going to be talking about tonight or again this morning it's not nighttime the reason why it's so dark in my office is just because the sun is is has not, get, not gotten up but in my mind it says okay it's nighttime because I'm looking at my face in this uh camera and it's dark, so it's like, well, it must be, it must be nighttime. So let's look at this, okay? Uh, this is from Second Thessalonians chapter two, verses one through four. It says, "Concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to Him, we ask you." So, so okay, that's the first thing we know that in the future, at some point, uh, Jesus will return, and He will resurrect His people from the dead, okay? So, all right, this is this is what's commonly referred to as the rapture. The the dead are raised, uh, the living also are taken up. Um, uh, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed. Let's just stop right there again. That's exactly what's happening. We are becoming very unsettled and very alarmed. There's a few things. If these are the last days. That's still not a reason for us, God's people, to be alarmed or unsettled. That that's the first thing. Um, so I, I, before we even go further, there has to be a part of us that's willing to trust in God. A part of us that's willing to just kind of tone it back a little bit, calm down a little bit, take a few deep breaths, and we'll get through this. It'll be okay. Um, even if the world isn't okay, even if everything goes to pot and Jesus returns right now, we'll still be okay. See, there's this idea that's gotten going around that as Christians, we can only be okay if our world is okay and everything's normal, and that's just not true. Um, so that's the first thing. Christians, We as Christians aren't supposed to be um, uh, uh, settled and unalarmed because there's no problems around us, but because we have something to trust in. And if you're looking at 2020 as the end times, and you're looking at all these different things, and you're getting, you're working yourself up, especially if you spend a lot of time on Facebook, you're already at a disadvantage. So let's continue on from verse 2. Not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us. So let's finish up the sentence there. Whether by a prophecy or by word of mouth or by a letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. So we can we can easily stop right there and say, well, there's a lot of things that people have um, kind of made up. Uh, not just about the day of the Lord already coming, but about a lot of other things. And they always say, oh, well, I had, I had a vision, I had a dream, I had an encounter with God, and now I'm going to say this thing that is not based on the Bible. And, you know, like televangelists saying, thing, proclaiming things about the virus and, um, oh, it'll be over in two weeks, and then here we still are. You know, it's like, well, I think that maybe... Maybe that was that was a false uh, false teacher. So with that being said, our, our our main root here can't just be you know a televangelist that we like or whatever. Okay, so don't become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly coming from us, whether by a prophecy, or by word of mouth, or by a letter. It, it, it's just not true. 
And that's a lot of what's happening in 2020. Um, we're getting ourselves worked up about something that's not necessarily even biblical. We're just kind of letting Hollywood write the end times for us. And I know that they've made Left Behind and all kinds of stuff like that, but it, it, it's it's not something worth us getting all stressed out and bent out of shape about with, with it's not when it's not really how it is. So um, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Now, this, this specifically what Paul is talking about here are some people are saying that hey, it's already happened. And so then verse 3, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. Verse 4, He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Okay, so that's that's something right there. And I... I I know that a lot of people are making a big deal about um, a passage that occurs in Daniel where, he's, where it talks about um, the guy making a covenant with many. And we will look at that next time. Um, so I just want you to, to know I'm, I haven't forgotten. Okay. Um, so here we see some things are going to happen before... That happens, and then some things are going to happen after he's revealed. So there's this kind of, this whole big thing going on. And as we looked at, I believe it was last time, we we already are in the end times. So it's going to fluctuate back and forth. Jesus has come the first time, not, not the second time. He hasn't returned, but he has come and, and established the church and all that. So we've got right there um, the beginning of the end, excuse me, the beginning of the end times. And you're going to see a lot of back and forth, a lot of things that are going to happen. And let's look at Matthew 24, verses 3 through 8, which is really going to build on this idea. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen, and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So right there, before we say anything, we should really look at the idea that we are never given a specific time. Okay? So uh, verse 4 says, Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. And I, once again, I want to just stop right there because that is such an important thing. There's a lot of deception going on right now. And Christians, because we aren't really reading the Bible, we're just kind of believing in whatever. So somebody says to me, it's like, oh, no, that's scary and it might be true. Let's believe it. And it's like, well, eh. there has to be a little bit more discernment that, that is taking place than that. So, okay, watch out that no one's deceiving you. Yeah. A lot of people are saying a lot of things. They're even claiming that God told, and told it to them just... Let's 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 dial it down a little bit. Uh, verse five: For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah, and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. So we see this. There's a lot of things going on in the world that's causing anxiety and fear. Um, people getting deceived and all these different things. And here's the thing about deception. We've already always convinced ourselves, oh, I'm not deceived. Everybody else is deceived. Everybody else is an idiot. I'm too smart to be deceived. That's exactly how people who are deceived are deceived, by thinking that they're above deception. Um, so, okay, there, there's this whole wars and rumors of wars. And the, remember that he says that these things must happen. They, they're going to happen. See, we live in a time where we think that we can micromanage everything. We can always be in control of everything. We can end racism just by writing. We can, you know, uh, we can have free equal rights for everyone just by walking around the, around the city. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that we shouldn't protest and we shouldn't stand for rights and we shouldn't vote. And I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is in our minds somewhere we have this idea that um, kind of this self-worth idea that, that we have just an inflated self-worth. Basically, we are more important than God himself. And we can do whatever we set our minds to if we just declare it out into the cosmos or whatever. And even if it's against the will of God, no, it doesn't matter because God wouldn't ever allow something unpleasant to happen. There's just this idea that we're always in control. And I think that's one of the valuable things about what Jesus is saying here. That this is not something we're going to be in control of. And that's okay. See, you, it's, it, there's this idea with, with people with anxiety that the way you get over anxiety is by affirming that you are still in control. That's just not true. 
That's just not true. You're not always going to be in control of everything. You can't control other people. You can't control the way your life goes. There's just so many different complicated things that we can't control. And the more we try to hold on to it, the more anxiety we're going to have. So these things are going to happen. See to it that you are not alarmed. Don't be surprised that it happens. If fear starts creeping up, remember to trust in God. He holds the future. It, trust is not saying, I trust that God is going to get me through this by, and I'm going to make um, all the right decisions. Trust is this. God is in control of the situation even though I'm not. There's a big difference there between self-focus and, and God-focus. The more you self-focus, the more you um, in, um, validate yourself, if, for lack of a better word, uh, the more of your problems you're going to have with anxiety, but the more you trust in God and lean in Him and His promises and know that He's got this. There's a lot of scary things happening out there. God's still got this. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. We, we know who we're trusting. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Don't let it catch you off guard. There's going to be times when you're scared, but don't let it catch you off guard. and Don't let, don't let your fear run away with you. And then verse 7, nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Now, I want you, I want you to realize how much worse things could be. I know if people say, oh, it's just 2020, everything's bad. But l let me just remind you real quick of how much worse things could be. If those fires were going at the same time as a volcano, at the same time as a massive earthquake that, that messed with, messed with um, uh, California, at the same time as, you know, all these different things that could have happened at the exact same time, and it would have made, we would have, our world would have been completely reduced to nothing. It wouldn't have been life as normal. You wouldn't be sitting in your house with Netflix. We're talking about a global crisis that would have caused, potentially, uh, worldwide famines and, and hunger and, and death. Plus, let's be honest, coronavirus could have been a lot more deadly than, than it was. I'm not trying to downplay people who have died. I'm, I'm not trying to, you know... Um, not trying to make light of that, but I'm saying it could have been a lot worse. Uh, we're somewhere on like 200,000 something or something like that. And meanwhile, every year, over 400,000 people are dying of, of smoking. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. It's not like the Black Plague. Um, but with that being said, you know, um, if it would have been more deadly... Uh, you know, a lot of these things, if it all would have happened at the same time, you don't understand there wouldn't have been food on the, on the shelves at the stores. There wouldn't have been people to get the merchandise from one place to another. You were talking about widespread hunger and famine and death and a lot of bad things. People would have been in each other's throat, as we've seen already, but on a more global scale with nations against nations. It could have been a lot worse. Remember that. See, so there's some people who think, oh, 2020 is just a bad year. 2020 is not a bad year. It's not a bad year. A lot of good things have happened. We've grown closer to God. That's a very important thing. The church has gotten an amazing opportunity, not, not our church, but the church has gotten an amazing opportunity to learn what does it mean to be a Christian and to look at that and really wrestle with it. There's a lot of people who call themselves Christians and weren't living like Jesus, but now it's just shown it to them. Oh, I don't have a relationship with God, which is a good thing because the more we lie to ourselves, the harder it'll be. So, okay, Th things could have been worse. There's a lot of good things that happen. I mean, there's this whole peace treaty that happened in the Middle East. That's a good thing. I mean, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of bad stuff happening, and so let, let's let's kind of wrap this up with a few last points. Uh, first off, we are in the end times. Okay, Jesus has come the first time, so we are yeah, we are in the end times. However, that shouldn't. There's just a certain idea here that I want to get across. We're not necessarily in the last days. Now you might say, well, that's you're making a distinction that the Bible doesn't make. Yeah, I, I understand that because the Bible doesn't spell out end times very clearly. It's my belief that basically what I'm trying to say here by using my own vocabulary 
is that we are in that time of the birth pains of the back and forth, but the man of lawlessness hasn't been revealed yet. And the rapture hasn't happened. Jesus hasn't returned. We're not in the last days. So think of it as this is the end time segment. We're not in this period of it. Now we could be in this period of it or this period of it. We really don't know. But I know that speculation doesn't really get us that much. It just causes us to run around like a chicken with its head cut off. So with that being said, this is the very last thing I want to say here. Some of these things that are happening, okay, happen as judgment. Some of that that's absolutely true. Some of these things, there, uh, there's immorality, and and God does punish. It, absolutely, I'm not trying to diminish that. I don't think that every single time that there's you know a global issue that it's God. However, I think that this this is pretty darn close to you know as, as bad as it can it can get without it being you know, the last days, um, of how more could God possibly talk to us? You know, it's it, things have gotten pretty rough. Um, having a fire that causes a lot of smoke at the same time that uh, as a um, as a virus that causes a lot of breathing issues, that's, that's, not, that's not a great combo. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that, that is definitely something to think about, you know, that, that some of these things are likely because of judgment. Now, I did hear a pastor go, going on a rant about um, it's because of, of California and all the homosexuals in California or something. I, I still don't know exactly what his point was. I guess, you know, all other sin doesn't really matter. It's just homosexuality. And I guess that the only sinners that exist in all of the U.S. are in California. Who would have ever guessed? I, I really don't know what his point was. But he goes on this rant about how the fires are because of California's sin. Well, there's a few problems with that. The, the fires are in New Mexico, Arizona, uh, California, Oregon, Washington. And here's a bigger problem is that it's affecting a bigger area than that. So then you'd have to change your theory to it's a judgment on America. But other countries are being impacted as well such as Mexico and Canada. So maybe it's a judgment against North America. Well, okay, but then there are still things going on in other places of the world. For instance, there's a famine right now going on in Africa. Um, actually, I don't know if it's still going on. It was going on a few months ago. It, things could have changed by now. I, 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 I really don't know. But either way, so it's like, well, so now you're talking about judgment on the whole world. So, see what I mean? Like, you, you have to be careful with saying that something is from God unless he specifically says, I did this. You really want to be careful with that. The next thing, and don't claim to speak from God. There's a lot of people who, who do this. Well, I'm just a prophet and I can tell you this is the wrath of God. Well, I mean, once again, maybe it is, but somebody who claims to speak in place of God, I, I don't know. It, if there's any proof, okay, you know, but I have a really hard time because there's a lot of people who deceive and a lot of people who are deceived. They get into these mystical teachings and they think, oh, I'm somehow above the typical Christian because I'm a prophet, yeah, whatever. So, okay, some of these things happen as judgment. Some of these things happen as just a natural occurrence. Like, for instance, in 2020, everything is attributed as, you know, a sign of the end times. Well, here's the thing. A lot of the things that are happening are just natural occurrences anyways. So, I mean, that is something to remember, that's like saying, oh, the sun's shining today. It's a curse on us because of 2020. Like, calm down, guys. It's just it's just something that happens. Um, there was somebody who was talking about um, earthquakes in New Mexico. New Mexico gets earthquakes. A lot of our cities are on fa fault lines. They're like, what do you think's going to happen? Um, but they're just the typical earthquakes that we've had for years. I mean, it's not like uh, a New Mexico city was pummeled to the ground. Now, obviously, I don't want to try and make light of these things too much because, once again, if God is trying to speak to us, we need to make sure that we're listening. So what's the what, what can you do? You can pray. Pray for those people who are affected. Uh, pray that you, that you grow stronger. Um, you can uh, repent, is what the Bible says a lot of times when, when bad things are happening. You know, you, you've seen these things happen and you're not, not repenting. So one of the thing, easy things that you can do is you, you can just Ask God to forgive you. You can you can pray that He shows you anything that you're doing that's immoral or, or evil. You can ask that He speaks to other people. 
You can, I mean, there's just lots of things that you can do. Um, you can pray that help would come to those who are suffering and that they would get the help that they need. You can pray all kinds of different things. I'm not trying to tell you how to pray. I'm just saying there's a lot of opportunity for prayer. Um, and then the last thing is some of these things might be happening as a sign, a sign of what's to come, uh, a sign of uh, kind of like a, they call it foreshadowing. It's, it's when something happens that is pointing towards a greater fulfillment. So all these things that are happening, what if this was on a much larger scale? What if we're talking about a virus with the death capability of worse than the Black Plague was in the medieval uh, uh, middle, medieval times? What if we're talking about not just a fire in the Southwest? What if we're talking about a, a global fires and, and volcanoes going off everywhere with massive scale eruptions and, 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 and earthquakes? What if we're talking about something like that, a much bigger scale? See, things are already a little bit scary out there. And the news is already, like, trying to make it even scarier than it is. But if you just kind of step out and walk outside, you're like, oh, the sun's still shining, the wind's still blowing. What happens if, if a situation comes when those things aren't regular? When, when you walk outside and it's no relief, everywhere you go is a constant reminder of how terrible things are in the world. You go on your phone, you go outside, you go watch the news, everywhere it's there. See, so I, I really think that some of these things are happening as a sign, kind of shaking up the complacency. Not just not just in the world, mind you. Um, you know, hey, you guys need to get your act together, but also in the church. I mean, there's a lot of people who, who think, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm just going to sit here in, in, a, in a pew and not do anything. I'm going to live for myself. I'm going to spend my money for myself. Everything I do is going to be about me. I'm going to do all kinds of immoral things, and I'm going to condone immorality. But at the end of the day, hey, at least I'm not one of those sinners. And it's like, well, that's not really how this works. A relationship with God doesn't mean you get out of, get a get out of jail free card where you get to live however you want. A relationship with God means that you're trusting in Him. So we'll continue this series next time. Sorry I went so long. I hope that this kind of clarifies some things and hopefully alleviates some of that fear that is just kind of in the air. So, okay, see you guys.